Welcome to Pantry Pals, a.k.a. Sutton's Days. This is my buddy, my pal, Shonda. This is the face behind the moderator that you see on Monday Night Live. <laughs> That's right. She will take you down. So, hello, everybody. So, on Thursdays, just as a quick backdrop, because I know this is open to the public at large. Um, I don't know how many people. Hey, Darcy's here. Um, I don't know how many people uh, will wander in, but... We have a membership group and it's called Pantry Pals. And every Thursday or most Thursdays, unless, you know, the world happens or Phil cuts something off, um, we have a book club every single Thursday. And this month we already finished our book and we have got this extra Thursday in the month. It happens to be, can you believe it's the end of September? No. That's because it's not. It's the end of August. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Where's the volume coming from? Oh, good night, nurse. Oh, good night, nurse. Okay. okay. Um, it is chaotic. It is goofy. Um, there are times when we're wearing headlamps. There are times when we're laughing so hard we can't talk. And it is all done privately with a small group of amazing individuals who are pantry pals. So if you are interested in being a pantry pal, we not only have book club every single Thursday, but we also have Pantry Pal live chats on Fridays. It's similar to Monday Night Live with significantly less people. And so we normally just kind of talk and have a really great time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even stay on topic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Hello, hello. Hey, Jill. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. Lori C's in here. Suburban Hillbilly. Hello, hello. So do not feel obligated. It's just, it's an extra way to support the channel. We have a lot of fun. And what time is book club and other meetings? 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is what time that is what time we meet. So all at, all in Homestead, that is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Monday Night Live is 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So that's every Monday. Okay. So Suburban Hillbilly says, I'm going to be quiet and listen. I'm so mad my hands are shaking. Well, honey. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, too. Get a hammer and an old desk and beat the crap out of it. You'll be fine. We were just talking about that. Shonda's got some anger management techniques. Skills. There is no secret handshake, Ghost Rider. None at all. So, um, four, 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 four. Can I do this? We are about to find out. Yes. I, um, did this work? Oh, oh, I know what I did. Well, wait, come back here. Come back here, Shonda. There you are. Oh, here I am. Okay. So this is the book that we are going to be discussing. I'm not doing any canning stuff. Okay. Oh yeah. Hello everybody. And welcome to WLSD. Okay. So this is the book that we're discussing tonight. This is literally all that we're talking about. If you guys have other questions, feel free to email me for anybody. Has anybody read one second after raise your hand in the chat. If you've read one second after. I not only read it, I reread it, I reread it, I reread it, and I passed out probably 20 copies of it, okay? So, oh yeah, Sven's up in the middle of the night to come here. Yes, he is. Oh yeah, we got a lot of people that have read it. Okay, so um, let me let me get rid of this for a minute. So, uh, we were kind of talking at the beginning. Exactly, Darcy, right? I've read it, and I've listened to it about 12 times now. I, if I, if you could wear out audible, I would have done it. Oh yeah. And every single time I listen to it, I end up crying and it's like, you know, it's, I know what's going to happen, but mm -hmm. I still, it just, oh, that book, that first book. Okay. Evoked so much emotion from so many people because I think he just nailed it perfectly. He he brought things to our attention that we might not have thought about. I know a lot of things, you know, that you just don't think about things that you take for granted now, like medications, you know, just all kinds of, it's more than putting food in the pantry. It's more than starting a fire without a match. You know, there's, there's a lot involved in what happens if this totally plausible, take North Korea, totally plausible thing were to happen what would happen to our country today? Right. 
And he, he pulls emotion from you as you're reading it too. Oh, absolutely. Fabulous. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, there were times because the first time I read it, it was on Kindle. And so I was reading it from my laptop and I wake up obscenely early in the morning and Phil sleeps in light later. And so I'm sitting here at like five o'clock in the morning on my laptop, mm -hmm. all late, you know? And so if, if you haven't read the first book, then I'm sorry, but like, you know, when the dog, when uh, the dog, when the daughter, when the, you know, all, all the things you don't think about the nursing homes. If something like this happens, what happens to the people that are in the nursing homes? Right. Because I can guarantee you the staff is not paid enough to be there today. So in right. that kind of emergency, you know, it's going to be a very rare find mm -hmm. for any of the staff to stay. So then what happens to those people? Right. I'm with Darcy. The nursing home got me. That, oh, yeah. that was the hardest to think about. Yeah. Um, go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Oh, well, the, John, we got John tearing up now. Oh, I have a trick. So you can always have your hands available when you're crying while reading a book. You go like this and you hook it in your glasses and you can tear up and hey, the more you know, just saying. Okay. Be it's afraid. Be afraid. Be very be afraid. afraid. I am trying to generate a link for you and it's giving me trouble. So for the person that asked, look it up on Amazon one second after. Okay. Cause it's not letting me grab a link for you right now. Um, but the book is just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What were some of, so in the chat for the folks that are in the chat, what parts of the first book and Shonda, what part of the first book, stuck with you the most, hit you the hardest and stuck with you the most. The first thing is the first thing I always bring up is when he had to make the decision to shoot the boys that were stealing from the nursing homes and stealing all the drugs. And I thought, holy heck, to be the guy that has to do it. And the way he wrote it out is that, you know, he couldn't force that on anybody else. He couldn't put someone else in the position to do that. He could have chosen and said, okay, I'm in charge, so you have to do it. But he took it on because he knew how hard that was going to be for someone else to do too. And right. That that stuck with me. He made that decision. That was. Um, that was good. Oh yeah, all in one homestead, feeding the family, dog to the kids. Oh my gosh. That was. Hi, Greg. Hey, Greg. Greg doesn't come here to see me. He comes here to see Shonda. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was that was a very very hard part. For, I mean, I'm a I love my dogs. I'll take you down. Yes, I like my dogs more than I like people. So that was a really hard part for me. But I also knew. I mean, at, at that point in the book, and I'm going off memory because it's been a hot minute. But um, at that point in the book, his pregnant daughter oh was essentially starving. Yes. So that you know, a decision needed to be made. Yeah. Yep. I mean. I hate to say that we we used to say this as a joke, but it wasn't really a joke. But when we first started prepping and stuff, you know, and you hear about what people have to do. And I can remember rattling it off. I'm like, well, what dogs would be the first one to go? Which right. one the first one for right. us? Right, right. And, you know, by that point, there wasn't a whole lot left to the dog. You know, they were pretty thin. You know, and they had that rule that was interesting is that, um, you know, you were not, people's dogs were being stolen, of course, to eat. And so it was, if you, if you're going to kill your dog or whatever, your dog has to be yours. You uh -huh. eat your dog. You can't eat someone else's. And it was like, oh my gosh, when he gave it to the neighbor. I know. Oh. I know. Because I, they couldn't, at first, at first, they couldn't do it. Yeah. They couldn't bring themselves to do it. Exactly. But, oh. and, and, but that dog, they didn't kill that dog. The, the, the guys that tried to rob them killed that dog. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And at that point, you waste nothing. So, I mean, mm -hmm. book number one was so thought provoking. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there was not a part of that book that did not make you think about, oh, my God, what would I do? Right. Mm -hmm. So Mandy in Massachusetts said he made me jump back on the wagon when he said, if he only grabbed, if he'd only grabbed one, you know, an extra bag of rice from the club stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is kind of this, this book 
while it's not the first prepper fiction that's out there, um, definitely took a lead role in a resurgence to the prepping community. Right. Um, and if you've read it, you know why. I mean, he 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 covered so many things that a you just don't think about, b are taboo, uh, c you hope you never have to think about. You know, he right. really he really ran the gamut with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, John, the Trucker's Kitchen, the fact that Asheville tried to take them over. So mm -hmm. after this book and reading about, you know, the people coming down the freeway and all this. Now, oh. we're not on a major interstate, but there is a highway that comes up. We're mm -hmm. not on that, but we're not far from it. And I remember sitting there thinking, what happens when these people all start coming this way? Right. Right. What are we going to do when all these, what bridges are we going to have to blow up? And I mean, Jill, Jill is familiar with this area. I'm, I'm literally laying in bed at night going, what bridges would we have to blow up to impede people from making their way up this highway, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then how would they get over to us? The purring lady, good to see you, my friend. His insulin dependent daughter and the pharmacy having to limit what they could have. And then when she, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the one thing about this book too, that made me think is my, my go-to my out, if anything were to happen, was hook them up to the trucks and we're heading up. This, that's my go-to. And then I'm thinking after reading this and how everything stops and the other, if I can just get my truck through and actually right. keep my truck all the way up, I mean, for goodness sakes, there's no way we're towing two different, you know, there's no way. No, they, they will, they will stop you. They will oh, stop yeah. you. They will stop me. Um, okay. So when he had to drive away and leave people stranded. Yeah. When it works, when the book first started and he had to turn away from people at the freeway. Yes. Um, what, what was his wife's name? Which Mary? No, that was the first wife. Oh, um, Michaela. Michaela. Michaela thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Um, before it was his wife, you know, I'm doing so good with my brain. I'm so I, you are. I'm so impressed. You're amazing. Yeah. Um, some libraries lend out audio copies through their lending platform. You may have to wait months to get your turn. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I have all three of the books. Don't want spoiler alerts going to pop off. Okay. We're going to try not to spoil it. We're not, we're going to try not to spoil it too much. Yeah. Not but I absolutely get it. I mean, if, if, this book has been out a week now and I devoured it the first mm -hmm. day. The first day I was able to get it, I devoured the entire book. And yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh, and his daughter's boyfriend died. He had to give her. <sighs> yeah. Right. Right. I mean, of her baby. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. That, that, that sucked. Yeah. I was amazed at how quickly the wild game was hunted out. No, not yeah. at all. That's the one thing I'm not amazed at because do you know how many people, and now Purring Lady, you live in the UP, right? But you, there are people all the time. I hear them all the time. Well, if anything happens, I'll just go up north and, and we'll hunt for our food. Like it's walking into a grocery store. If you've got all the people that are here that are used to the traffic that the animals provide, that are used to where they are where they congregate what they do they're already going to be out there hunting right? right so then you've got you know billy bob coming from downstate who's working his way up here gets up here and he thinks he's going to shoot everything there will be nothing to shoot in less than 30 days right. in less than 30 days they will kill everything mm -hmm. um well i wouldn't want my baby i wouldn't want my fur baby to starve either my yeah. baby yeah, I wouldn't want my fur baby to starve either. Nope. Nope. I, but he did pretty much um, in the book, the dogs didn't necessarily get the people food because there was so little of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were left to scavenge. You know, they were left to get the squirrels or get, you know, whatever they could because um, they weren't they weren't locked up. I agree. I agree. In my opinion, George's Garden, this book was life-changing. It changes the way that you look at absolutely every aspect of your life. 
Um, Grit and grace. Thank you for, for noticing my mug. This is my favorite coffee mug. It's my Hank mug. We got it from a thrift store. Hank. Hank is important. Um, Darcy says, book number one was my favorite because it was the one that really made me think about preparedness and what to do for us. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, Ancestry Acres is reading it now. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Seriously. I mean, who would have seen cannibalism on their bingo card reading this, this first book, right? Well, that didn't surprise me. <laughs> Well, we got, after everything else, oh, yeah. I I actually when when I first read it, that surprised me. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah, and I guess it was like out of all of the other god awful things going on, really, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so the link to the book, the the fourth book, which is the one that we will be discussing here shortly, is down below in the description box, you guys. Um. Yeah, the can. Yeah, okay. This yes, North Star Prep Stutter. Good to see you. How he nailed the base human personalities when people found themselves in that situation. Very eye opening. Yes. 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 Exactly. I agree. Right. I agree. Because it he really just took it straight down to these are the kinds of people that you're going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. And it, it was kind of amazing. And trying to sit. I don't know, but how many of you. And I'm like way behind in the chat. But how many of you, as you're reading this book, could relate to the people in the book and found, figured out who you were in that book, personality-wise? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I could see that. Because mm -hmm. I remember sitting back going, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I could do that. No, I'd probably throat punch that person, but I could <laughs> do that. You know? And, and so you kind of take a look at, yeah, can you, you know, can you do this? Yeah, it was eye-opening. Definitely. It was. And so Karen, Karen Voller says cannibalism would happen sooner than later. And I think it did. It just didn't come into the book until later because it was established someplace else. Yeah. Um, I think Lori C. asked, is, is book five as good as book one? This is book four. Oh, four. And, Sorry. Um. Okay, so let's do a quick synopsis of that. Okay. Book one was world-changing, life-changing reading. Yes. Book two and three were not. That's true. I didn't hate them. Right. They just, the expectation after book one is that it's going to be as amazing as book one. It would be impossible, in my opinion, to right. meet the, I, I have yet to find another book that meets this level of expertise Right. on this topic that right. that evokes all those emotions and all those feelings right right book four i think it was better than two and three yeah i do because it it helped what's the right word he he writes books with um who's that general guy Oh shoot. The William Forstchen or whatever. He writes books with that um is it all Ollie North. Who is it? He's yeah. not writing with Oliver North. He uh uh Ging uh Gingrich? No. Well that maybe Newt Gingrich. I don't know whoever. Newt, yeah, he had a he had a forward from Newt Gingrich in okay. the first book. Yeah, and I think he I think he writes books with some one I don't know, one of those guys oh, okay. that knows stuff that know stuff about things happening in the government. Oh, this guy's a total history. If you read any right. of his other stuff, he's uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. And so I thought, okay, when I got to book four and the way it started and the things it was talking about and other people, and I went, oh dear, this is this, I was interested, very much interested in it. So whether it's as good as one, I don't know, but I was very much interested because I want to know what he found out, how much of this is plausible, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, uh, and he did throw a new twist in it. He did. Book Okay. So where I don't think two and three had a new twist to them. Not book really. four had a new twist to it. Yes. It had a new SHTF moment. Yeah. You know, it made me mad. It, 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 I was angry at first. It, it did. It, yeah. I think, I think he redeemed some of that from two and three, which were necessary to take you to the point that they did. Right. Um, 
And I find book four completely plausible. Yeah. Yes. And, and I mentioned it with Shonda and I were talking before this started and I likened it to Hitler. Yes. Because that is the kind of mindset. Insanity. Pure. Egotistical, self-centered. Pure evil. Yeah. Pure evil. Mm-hmm. Oh, Karen Voller. No way. Karen Voller, I don't think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> Wait, she's still my friend. Okay, fine. So we're friends. No way. Book one sucked me in so hard that I immediately started reading it over again. I can't remember. It's been so long since I read it. I can't remember if I thought afterwards or not on that one. I needed a little um, more clarification on certain things. Right, right. Yeah, yeah so I kind of wanted to go back. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he did testify in Congress about the real potential for EMPs, and they ignored him yep. blatantly, like they are still continuing to do. Yep. And um, he is or was a oh, I did not know that he actually I knew that he lived there. He actually does live there. Charlie, for those of you that know Charlie, oh. Charlie and Tom actually did a kind of a walkabout and went over there. Uh, to Ashland and to that area. Mm -hmm. And so they got to see that area. And I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people that have mentioned that they, they've gone there just specifically because the book, it's, it's a real place. It's, it's a real thing. And mm -hmm. I would hate to, uh, I would hate to be him because I'm sure people are showing up at his door. Yeah. I did, did he gave him, Really? Because I think he was pretty involved in it to begin with, Dars. Dars, if you're not nice, I'm going to put you on camera. Um, Lori, see, I don't think it was, uh, I don't, where did that go? I don't think it's, it was a one show, one, a one song wonder so much in is it, it was so good and so thought provoking that it's almost impossible to meet that expectation repeatedly. Mm -hmm. But while I do not say that book four is as good, it's it's like in second place out of the four. Yeah. Just because it makes you think more about, mm -hmm. to be blatant, how shitty human beings are. Right. You know? I was surprised. I don't think this is a spoiler, but in book four... There were point times when um, John got so meek, and it was a little bit of a shock to me. Yeah, I'm assuming it's because he was shell shocked at that moment mm -hmm. with the things. But I was just kind of like waiting for him to stand up and say no or whatever. I just really was. I think so though that if you if you read the if you read the undercurrents that if he were to say no, they'd have killed him right there. At oh, which yeah. point, then he knew his family would be dead. Right. Oh, I, I don't mean about that part, but I mean other leading up to, you know, oh. leading up to with one of the twists, you know, this, the one guy I just, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was, am I getting used to bangs? Andrew, oh, jeepers. My hair. Sorry. Who's messing with your bangs? Andrew's like getting used to the bangs? Barely, because I keep messing with my hair. They're just, they're just there. They're bangs. Okay. So yeah, I did. I, th I threw paperbacks of this book at anybody that would let me do it because it to me it was just it just yeah yeah john i'm with john i agree, I agree yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah now you i do believe you have to read them i do believe you have to read them in order just to get this to get the people yeah because he talks, he talks so much more about ernie too in book three and ernie was an integral poor yes yes even though i would throw punch ernie yeah of times yeah just say there are quite a few people i would throw a bunch oh my heavens yeah mm -hmm. but when you look at i mean they've hmm. moving kind of into book four without trying not to give anything away okay um and yeah grit and grace i i have officially now i just purchased the kindle book before we came on because i have it on audible and I bought the hardcover, but then I mailed it to Charlie. And so I'm like, I don't have a book for tonight. So, um, yeah, this I had to buy the Kindle real quick just so that I could refer to it. 
Oh, see Karen Buller. And I think that helps me so much. What I do when there's a lot of info I have to, I have to get, I get the audio book and I get the book and I do both. I follow yeah. the book with the audio book and that way I get it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Ernie needed a throw punch. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of emotional shock value in book one. It's hard to outdo that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there were just, there were, honestly, there were, there were just things I didn't think about, you know, that yeah. you think about preparedness. We are, that's what I talk about all day, every day, preparedness. And, but the stuff, when you, when you read a book like that, everything that I'm talking about is absolutely ridiculous, you know? Because the nursing homes and the di the diabetics and the people with pacemakers and the people on certain medications, the people that are on, on medications for their mental health, the people that, I mean, what happens when all of that is gone and how quickly does society just start spiraling, you know? And I think he kind of nailed it. Yeah. Hey, John, thank you for becoming a pantry pal. Unfortunately, I, I got to find out how this works, but um, I, I don't have anything I can pin because it's a different program. But anyway, John, the Trucker's Kitchen, welcome to Pantry Pals. We are glad to have you. Um, we do have a book that we're going to be reading for next month, and I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me what it is <coughs> because I have it written down. Check her out, right? It, it does. It's called Cooking with Scraps. Cooking with Scraps is next month's book. And I have no idea who the author is. Um, no, but it's I, I started reading it by accident because I thought it was a different month's book. Anyway, it's a good book. Um, the Purring Lady, but it really makes you reassess your preps. Mm -hmm. I really loaded up on medical supplies while reading book one. It mm -hmm. really makes you think about it. It does. And then going through some medical emergencies makes you then reassess them and then makes you oh, reassess yeah. them. Somebody... <laughs> and uh, this week, today's Thursday, this week, I asked a question on Tuesday, I think, what is an unusual winter prep item that you stock, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to go through all of the answers, but I just caught one while I was scrolling today. And I'm like, what is that? I had to look it up. And don't ask me, E-M-E-S-I-S bags? Emesis bags. They're barf bags. Yeah. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah, those together in the hospital with the plastic ring. Yeah, oh, those are great. Okay, see, and I'd never heard of that. So, oh. so you know, it's one of those things where you go, "Do I need that?" Or you know, when Phil mm -hmm. cut off his his thumb and they had that cage to put the bandage over. So I'm like, oh, right. I need one of those. I mean, I walk into an emergency room anymore, and I'm like, I need one of those, and one of those, and one of those, and one of those. So yeah, medical preps, medical preps for your animals. Yep. If we can't make the meeting, are they available to listen? Or yes, yes, the playback is available if you can't make the the meetings. But the 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 book club, the book club meetings are hysterical because Shonda and Ellie and Amy, Ellie and Amy couldn't be here tonight. Um, but Ellie and Amy uh, and Shonda, what was it last week? We are not always out of it. I I was out of it ugly. And so instead of canceling, Shonda and Ellie hosted book club last week. And I don't think I've laughed that hard in a while. I'm like, Ugh. what are they doing? I mean, it was hysterical. So we're all we were nuts. All I can say is I was able to rein in Ellie a little tiny bit <laughs> sometimes. She was, she was raring to go. Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, the super secret WLSD book club. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, no, this is not this month's book. We're just talking about it. This is an off week. It's the fifth week of August. So we're talking about um, book number four, a John Matherson novel five years after. So I'm a quote person. Do you like quotes? I do. I love quotes, right? Mm -hmm. And right at the very beginning of the book, mm -hmm. T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland, I will show you fear in a handful of dust. 
I just, he did so many good quotes throughout mm -hmm. this book. Um, I think that if you've read the other books, if you read one and you really super enjoyed it and it kind of changed the way you look at everything, right? And then you read two and three and you went, eh, okay, but I got a little bit of follow up. Okay, you know, four, you will be, you'll be happy with. Yeah. You will not be book one happy, but you will be happy with it. Oh, yeah. I had to stop partway through four. It might have been because I did two and three and four all together. Yeah, you, to you binged everything. Yeah. Yeah, I just stopped in four and just watched something brainless and then get back to it because it, it was a lot. It was a lot. It, it was a lot to take in. And in mm -hmm. kind of here, here's a spoiler that's not a spoiler. He takes quite a bit of time setting up what's going to happen in this book. Yeah. So there were points where I'm like, oh, my God, get to it. It was still good information. You were still learning what was going on. You were learning more history than you thought you wanted to know. Right. You know? Um, a bit, though. I, he does. I did like that. Yeah. He throws a lot of history in there. And so, you know, that was the thing that kind of went. Oh my God, what's this book going to be like? But then when it hit the point where you figured out what the book was going to be about, mm -hmm. you were glued. It was, don't talk to me. I'm listening or I'm reading or whatever. Just leave me alone because I need to get through this. I need to find yeah. out how this ends. Yeah. And I had to rewind a lot too in it. as I, was I did a few times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it, in the, in the last half of the book, I don't even know if it's half, but in the last half of the book, there were times when you're like, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute, where, where would, you know, and you have to go back and kind of get the places settled because mm -hmm. yeah, there was a lot. And there are some serious evil, serious evil. Um, just for the record tonight, I am not answering any canning questions. Feel free to send me an email if you want to know or better yet, check out my playlists uh, where I answer the questions that you are asking. Okay. Um, Three, the book three, I cried more in book three, I think, than all of them. And I don't know why. Because I really? can't. Really? Mm -hmm. I think it was book three. I was like texting Amy. I am sobbing. I was so crying. Oh, so really? Mm hmm. Okay. Now I have to. Now, I, now I'm going to. I wish uh, I could remember why. Okay. So the title of book four is the title that is in the, the title of this video. Hey, Chuck Norris. It is five years after. But by William Forston, the link is down below in the description box. Scroll just a little bit. Okay. Um, I highly recommend reading book one, two, and three before you do this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I would show it, but I can't show you in the right way because I can't figure out how to turn my camera. Okay. Hang on. I have no, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here. Um, but hold on. I will do this. I will do this. I have got something that's, oh, what did I do? No. Something in my house is vibrating and it's not me. Okay. So that is the name of the book that we are talking about now, five years after. It is the fourth book. It just became available on the 22nd of August. I finished it mm -hmm. by the end of the 23rd. And if you can get the audio book of it, I have to say it's oh, red. Oh. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Bronson, Bronson Pinchot. Is that I right? Think that's what you said it was. Yeah. Yeah. He performs the book. I mean, he doesn't just read it. He performs it and it's fan freaking test. He does so good. Cause I can, oh. when, when Shonda said this earlier, I remember I, I told her, I said, I can remember thinking that while I was listening to it. Yeah. He was totally performing this book. With yeah. everything that he had. So, I think it, it makes you hear it like maybe the way the writer expected you to hear it yes. and read it instead of how we would be read. It's just wonderful. Yeah, it really it absolutely. Adds, it adds a lot. I am a huge Audible fan mm -hmm. um, just because I can multitask and still manage to read a book. I'm not, you know, glued to a chair. Great. And then I do the same thing where if it's something, if it's, if it's fiction like this, I will... I don't always get the, the, you know, the physical book mm -hmm. with this particular series. I must own the physical book. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, that's one of those things. But um, if it's uh, something that I want to pay attention to that I want to take notes on, I will listen to the book, 
and go through the hard copy with a highlighter or or post-its or you know whatever the case may be mm -hmm. yeah right. it's definitely it's good stuff um the purring lady i was a blabbering baby only with book one yeah literally okay yeah. book one yeah if if you don't shed a tear with book one yeah um sharon i i would say go to i would say go to amazon and type in the author's name the first book is one second after five years after is the fourth book i don't remember the other two but you'll be able to find them i'll type it I have it. I can't find a uh, comment. Oh, jeepers. I must mean nothing surprised. Nothing surprised you in book one? Karen. One year after. Yeah. Um. I think I was, I, you know, I was shocked that, I guess I was. Not that people would do this. I totally get that people would do everything that we read about and then some. Okay. Um, but, oh, hang on. This is what, well, look at that. What am I doing here? Okay. So there you go. Oh, good. There oh, you go. Okay. Perfect. Um, Book one was hard to read, but I couldn't put it down. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Could not put it down. Okay. So sorry, I just hopped on. How do you have the book in hand yet? No, the book the book is released. It, where do where do you live, Mary Martin? Because it was released August twenty second. Yeah. Here in the U.S. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I mean, it was. You couldn't get it out of your head. You could not get it out of your head. To Missouri, it's it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Yeah, check it out on Amazon. Um. Or Audible, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know why it would say May of 2024 because I I own three different versions of the book now. Or I did. I sent one to Charlie. And then her mom snatched it up. Oh, no. She goes, I'm probably never going to see it again. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. So, okay. So, in book four... Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I I do not. Where is that? Oh, that that's okay. I don't disagree with this. I I don't think there has ever been a book in this genre with this topic that evoked as much emotion out of me as his did. Mm -hmm. His very detailed take on it um was really the trick i mean i'm reading charles charlie's requiem right now oh uh -huh. okay i'm read. i'm i'm reading that series right now i'm on book three and a american is is uh a, you know a american is the author along with some other dude but i'm i'm hearing going home series again you know what i mean there's mm -hmm. a lot of there's a lot of overlap there, even though this is in a different setting. It's it's not in rural, mm -hmm. it's in an urban area. So um but the the book one, it was about a whole town though. It wasn't just one guy's view on what's go what he's going through. It was an exactly. entire town. With you got the whole town and what everyone was doing through through all of it. Right. Right. George mm -hmm. Garden says, just bought my audible three pack guess y'all know what I'm doing while canning tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take a break periodically. It's a lot. <laughs> See now I really like the 299 day series, mm -hmm. but I also thought it was very, um, high in the sky. Oh I, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I, I binge listened to all of those. Oh too. yeah. I, oh, all yeah. Of them. yeah. Loved them. But it was but, very utopia kind of yeah. Everything falls into place. You know what I mean? Like I don't happen to have four friends that know how to play with. Yeah. Me. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. I don't belong to a gang of guys who go shooting together and no. And, and I guess one of the things that, okay. So I, I don't know how everyone else feels about this. 
I did not feel talked down to with this series. Right. Okay. I love me some a, a American. I love a American. I have listened to the going home series at least five times the entire mm -hmm. thing. I'm now working through Charlie's Requiem and I still feel like I'm being talked down to like I'm some dumb woman. Right. Because that is how they characterize the women in their books. Right. And most apocalyptic fiction characterizes women that way. Yeah. And I know a whole bunch of really strong women right. who would kick your butt in a heartbeat. All in Homestead. Welcome to Pantry Pals. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, so, yes. Yeah, Darcy. See, yeah. And Darcy and I have talked about this before because like that video that I, I did um, uh, prepping for women only, right? Mm -hmm. Darcy and I talked back and forth on that, you know, and it just, it's a topic that's overlooked a lot. I'm not looking for a man to save me. Right. Stop talking to me like I'm stupid. Right. You know, um, I really, I really have a problem with that. Um, love the journal series too. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. That but was I like, but again, that was a woman writer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who didn't talk about, you know, didn't talk down to us. So right. Yeah, I really hate being talked down to. It, you know, and I really liked the day after. I can remember. You, did you see that when it came out on TV? No, Sean, I don't actually know how old you are. Don't tell me. But um, I'm 51. I just turned 51. Okay, so you're six years, uh, six years under me. Mm -hmm. So you might have been a little young for that when it came out. But the movie, the day after when it came out on TV, <laughs> like everyone stopped because that's back before we had cable. You know. Right. Um, and so everyone stopped to watch this made for TV. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was terrifying. Who and so, it? but I don't, I wouldn't put it on the same level as, as one second after, except for the era that it was let, you know, released in. Okay. You know, okay. um, and maybe even some of those who can't kick someone's ass anymore. We're not weak. We're smart. We know things. We're right. not playthings. Darcy, oh, I have never considered you a plaything. You saved my Facebook group today. Okay. So, okay. Oh, oh you haven't seen that yet? I haven't seen that yet, but I will. Okay. I will definitely. Um, yes, I agree. George's Garden. We need to write a strong prepper series just for women. It will scare the men. I think Amy's I, working on that. Okay, good. Amy needs to get busy. Stop screwing around with work. <laughs> right? I mean, we that, that whole nine to five job can mess up a good book, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You have to understand my husband shoots with a bunch of retired military officers. So I have been listening to the real stuff for years. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, I had to stop reading that series because he pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah. I still went through with it because apparently I enjoy being pissed off. Don't test me. Mm -hmm. But um, by the time he finally started really grating my nerves with the chauvinistic BS, I was too far into it to stop. Right. I had to see it to the end. You know what I mean? And his wife, the, the wife that's projected in that series, I'm sorry. Well, and that's the author yeah. projecting the stupid woman. Right. You know, but I'm going to teach my daughter how to be better. Uh, yeah. You could have married up, but you know, okay, whatever. Um, I love the day after and on the beach. I don't remember that one. Kelly, there's a link down below in the description box. My friends were extras in the day after. Ah, okay. That'd be cool. Yeah. You can watch the day after on YouTube. That's true. Okay. I will look for that. Oh, okay. Cause you, okay. It's, I, Oh, how did I run across that recently? Recently, I ran across it and I started to watch it and went, wow, that scared me at the time. That was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And and that terrifies me when I say that out loud. But yeah. yeah. An audio book, if you, if you get an Audible subscription, okay, um, an audio book, you go in there and they, you purchase a credit. They, they, subscription is a credit or two a month, depending on what you sign up for. Mm -hmm. And then that credit you can apply towards any book. 
And then you download it onto, well, you can download it onto your computer, onto your tablet, onto your phone, um, and you listen to it that way. Mm -hmm. I had to laugh at George's garden. I do agree with you. My foot would be in a special place if my husband, uh, special, anyway, if my husband talked to me like that. Like I was telling Lisa earlier, my dad has this view of me. My husband would never talk to me the way my dad does. My dad is convinced. This is funny. I think I've told you, we all we only drive trucks in this house. We don't have a car, a little thing. We don't have that. And my truck is the big 2500 Ram diesel. That's my baby. He gets the little 1500 cute, cutie pie. I get the big boy. And we bought a Suburban. And every time I take that thing out, my dad goes, uh... Does Jim know you're driving that? Does Jim know you're going to take that one out? And I'm like, be, I don't get it. I don't, I, I don't even understand the question because he thinks, oh, it's too big of a vehicle. You shouldn't be driving that. Because she doesn't have a certain appendage. <laughs> yes, that's exactly why I don't create testosterone through. Pony girl, I think that would be epic. Ooh. I think that that would be epic. That's neat. That is. How did you even find that? She must have really good Google skills. If anybody does, Pony Girl does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. They're dinosaurs from a prehistoric area. And yes, Kelly, that's right. That's right. Women can do anything. And most of the time we can do it better. Mm -hmm. So when Phil's son, um, he used to work for one of the cable companies. Okay. And in his job, he would have to go to all these houses, mainly in what I call the local area, the Northeastern Michigan area, where mm -hmm. if trees voted or paid taxes, we would be doing Epic. Okay. Because it is mainly national forest and state forest here. Mm. And he said it amazed him at the number of households that he went to where some guy was sitting around drinking a beer, doing nothing. And the one out there earning the money and paying the rent and doing everything else was the girlfriend or the wife. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we all, why, why do women tolerate this? I don't know. Um, it just, yeah, she Googled it. She Googled it. She Googled it. <laughs> of course she did. I, Pony girl, you know I love you. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So it's, you know, we have the ability to do all these things. It's just a lot of us have been taught from birth that it's not ladylike. It's not the way to do it. It's not this. It's not that. Do it. My God, if there's anybody in here under the age of 40, do it. If there's anybody in, in here under the age of 60, do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. We exactly. don't, you know, yeah. If you can't rely on yourself, you got nobody. Right. That's true. Um, sadly, I have a boss like that. Oh, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure you do. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be having some issues too. We had a kid come by selling an alarm systems and I told him, it's, you know, we're not interested. Thank you so much. Da, da, da. Oh, but he kept going, he kept going on. And then he said, let me talk to your husband. <laughs> Jim goes, what makes you think my answer is going to be any different? And I'm like, that's right. That's right. I get off my property. Oh God. Before I put you under it, everyone in a relationship should be equal. There's no excuse for gender identified household role roles. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Could not agree more. And okay. I got a shovel. That guy should have been scared. Yeah. I had to throw in a little bit of Thursday whimsical fun in there. Sorry. Oh, God. I have been, I'm, I'm blaming it on the super moon. Did you because, see that? Oh, my God. No. I was asleep for that part of it. No, I did see it oh. later on, though. But, okay. um, I am waking up at two, three, and four o'clock in the morning for like the last week. Oh no. And so I'm blaming it on the super moon. Okay. Um, because I was up at four o'clock this morning, which is sleeping in compared to what I've been doing. 
and I have been on the edge and I have been an mm -hmm. emotional and it, I mean, granted it's because people are dying and all this other stuff, you know? So it's kind of like, uh, do you really want to be that person that comes up and messes with me right now? Right. Cause I can't even fake being nice to you today. You know, Yep. the medical yep. field that was, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The medical, everything, oh, yeah. everything. I grew up in the medical field, Karen. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I understand. Seriously. China is finding out right now that girls are needed in society more than they thought. They're actually, um, did I hear that correctly? They're taking away that one child only thing uh -huh. um, because their population is diminishing so greatly. Mm -hmm. And without, sa same thing that's going on here, quite honestly. Okay. Um, is that if they're not out there breeding and creating more workers, then we're in trouble. That's right. And so China is figuring that out really hard. Yep. Yep. And John, she should scare the hell out of you. Yes. I have met John and his wife and, mm -hmm. and she will take him down at the kneecaps to start. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a look. And when that, that look happens, poor Jim. I used to shut down an entire busy kitchen with an eyebrow. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> someone's going to die today. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's not me. Okay. So, um, Shonda. Yes, ma'am. How do you feel about this book? I, I really liked it. I'm very glad I read it. I think it was very eye opening. It was frightening. And, I'm glad the end happened the way it did because that was really the only outcome I could see too. Yeah. Yeah. As bothersome as it was. And we're not going to tell you what the outcome was. No. But it's just because if we do, I will cry. <clears throat> okay. And we don't want Shonda to cry because she has no. makeup on today. That's right. Um, and it won't look good on my chin. Yes. Five years later is available. The link is down below in the description box, folks. Okay. Um, and I agree. Every woman should be lifting weights no matter how old you are. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, okay. That is the question, grit and grace. That is the question. Is the fourth book going to be the last one? Well, Bill and I are not pals, believe it or not. Even though I think he's pretty cool. I don't think he'd sit down and have coffee with me, but I think me? he's too smart. I think he's too smart. He, I, I would feel too stupid talking to this man. And I'm not a stupid person. I would just feel really stupid talking to this man. But he left this book wide open for another book. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to take a lot of creativity to to take to do another book after this. Though I, I, like I can't how, even imagine where it would go. I can't either. I like how he ended it because at this point, to go further from 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 this point, I it's going to be regional is going to be what. Right, because still, even with even with this book, technically it's regional. Yeah, exactly. True. Hey, my Thrive order just got delivered. <laughs> got mine a couple days ago. I heard the like, Where am I going to put this? Okay. Um, That's a good question. Yeah, but yeah, it's. I think uh, it's totally wide open for him to make another one should he decide to do it. But like Shonda said. I, I don't know where he'd go with it. Mm -mm. Legitimately, though, I didn't think he'd go here with this one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I this, It was a shock. Yeah. So it's kind of like, just when you think you have survived every freaking thing out there, what? You know, and it it, it kind of blows your mind a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I I, um... I would recommend this book. When when I got to the, the little twisty part, I think that's when I started texting Amy the WTF things. Yeah. I was like, what now? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The, I was, no, in, in this book, you will you will be reacquainted with him, his family, how they got there. There is some back and forth from this, you know, memories. You know how they do in TV shows, you know. Did you notice though in this book he kind of forgot about Elizabeth? Totally. Yeah, that I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you're old and you're you're married and gone, so we don't right. Know. Yeah, very very much didn't talk a whole bunch about the daughter that got pregnant. Mm -mm. Oh, a movie would be epic. I oh, a movie on book one. 
a movie on book one would be amazing. Yeah. I have a question. When did, okay, when did they have, they had their baby in book three, so I can talk about book three a little bit, right? When, okay, I don't have kids, so I don't know, but they named that baby after Jennifer. Yeah. The one that died from, from no insulin. And I thought, uh, I don't know, that really bothers me. At least, at least in the next book, when we found out the kid's actual name <coughs> was Jennifer, but I was like, who, no, no, please, Lord, no. Who does that? A woman would not suggest that. I I had a problem. With no, that. no, I wouldn't. I okay, would. but um, they do it all the time with boys and men. We're gonna name you after your father yeah. who died. We're gonna name you after your grandfather who died. My middle name is my grandmother who died. You know. I think more of it was um, like you're right. I mean, and I don't have a problem with that, the mm -hmm. boys or girls. It's more the fact that he he's so hung up on. Jennifer dying from not getting insulin. He's right. very hung up on that, which oh, I understand. So yeah. And it's yeah. such a big thing for his life. His whole purpose is driven by that. Mm -hmm. To name the new baby the same thing. Who would? Ugh. Yeah. But Holly, Holly made a good point. What's Planet that? Houston, the baby that was born is a boy. His name was Ben in book oh, one. I'm talking about Michaela and John when they had their baby in book oh, one. Okay. Michaela and John. Yeah. 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 No, that would have been horribly wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been really wrong. Yeah. yeah. She did. She, they didn't. So yeah, but they did bring it up. They did bring it up. Which yeah. It's a it's a honor to Jennifer, but it's not Jennifer. Thank yeah. You. Okay, so this book is available, guys. There's a link in the description box below. We wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't available, because we want you all to read it because. I inhaled this book and mm -hmm. a bunch of people I know inhaled this book. And then Shonda inhaled books two, three, and this book to be able to talk about it with me tonight. So I was, yeah, I was up until four o'clock in the morning, some nights listening. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm not sleeping much anyway. Okay. The title yeah, we need of one, to help you with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, one step forward, five steps back. Oh, of the, of the proposed. Gotcha. Okay. T took me a moment. Took me a moment. Yeah. Okay. It's 756. So, um, this, yeah, this good night. kind of a taste, kind of a taste. Okay. I have, I have something here. Some desperate clingy woman. Okay. Yeah, I don't do desperate or clingy. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so um, this is kind of a taste of what our Pantry Pals book club is like every Thursday. It's in our membership group. That's down below. It says join. Um, don't feel obligated. It's $3.99 a month. And uh, that pretty much pays YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have our books lined up for the rest of the year. And probably in a month or so, we will line up the books for 2024. Uh, that way people can get them early and do whatever, you know, it, that worked out really well for us this year. I think, I think so too. I, I yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. We all kind of knew what was coming down the pike and we had our list of books all ready to rock and roll mm -hmm. and it took the decision off of me. So yes, yes. like Kate Macho yeah. says, join us. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> there is 30 shades of ridiculous happening any given Thursday. <laughs> um, and we were very well behaved tonight. I'm just saying we seriously, this is not normal. No. This is not normal. I think it's because we're both sleep deprived. We are both very sleep deprived. And um, typically when the, when the, when the blinds are closed to the public at large, you mm -hmm. get a little bit more of my personality. And mine. Yeah, definitely Shonda's. Yeah. Definitely Shonda's. So okay. yeah. Yeah. Lori C says, yeah, we, we were behaved. Yep. Mm -hmm. And John said, Shonda, please. PM, PM is the next book. Okay. In Facebook? I, I can do that. Okay. Okay, everybody. So we're going to call it a night. Thanks for joining us tonight. If you're interested in this book that is 120% available, the link is down below. You can get it from Amazon. It's on Audible. It's on Kindle. It's on paperback. It's on hardcover. And you can probably check with your library to see if they've bothered to order it. Um, Two thumbs up. That was good. It was, it was good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, be, Tiger. I'll be keeping this tiger. Well, tiger has been a member for 28 months. That's she awesome. says, 
book club is amazing and I've learned so much. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay, everybody have a super good night. And remember, I put up a video at six o'clock. It was my Azure haul. Go check it out. I got Ooh. some stuff. I can't wait to see it. I know. Okay. Okay, everybody. Until next time. Oh, and for Pantry Pals, there is a live chat tomorrow for Pantry Pals. Woo! See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everybody.